Is it time to rediscover the wisdom behind the true naturopathic movement? When evaluating the information within this video, one might do well to remember the words of the founder of our modern scientific approaches of evaluation, who stated, Science is always wrong, and assigning boundaries to what we think we know is how we limit the possibility of an advancing future. It's worth being careful about how you define truth. Albert Einstein When it comes to evaluating our nutritional needs, is it possible that we have missed one or two of the most important factors that support our health and well-being? If you are one of the growing number of people who are questioning the contradictory findings of established nutritional wisdom, we welcome you to the electromagnetic nutritional world of Cornella, where we aim to help everyone attain their full potential. While addressing some of the fundamental unanswered questions when it comes to supporting our health and well-being from a naturopathic point of view, we start with the simple question, what should we expect from a nutritional consultation? Should we simply accept that by supplementing some key nutrients that seemingly make our symptoms more bearable, or disappear altogether, that we have addressed the problem? Or could it be that we are simply pushing these toxins ever deeper into our bodies? In a world where we now rely heavily upon scientific research, it's concerning to note that in a poll of 1,500 scientists, a reported 52% of them had failed to reproduce at least one other scientist's experiment, putting into question much of what we interpret as empirical evidence, an approach that forms the very basis of conventional medicine, leaving an astonishing 52% of the scientists suggesting that there is a reproducibility crisis within the scientific community. Surely as the naturopathic community observes these findings, it raises a big question over just how much confidence we as practitioners should be putting into these types of trial. Given these concerns, should we rather be identifying the biggest variable in these trials, the differing internal human cellular environments, or as some might suggest, the internal test tube that we are introducing these substances into? Surely as naturopaths we acknowledge that these environments are unique to each person and need to be assessed individually. After all, weren't we told that naturopathy is individualised medicine, not forgetting we were also taught that one man's medicine is another man's poison. And as Hippocrates states, premium non nasir, which translates into first do no harm. What if you could rediscover an approach that has evolved over many generations of naturopathic understanding? A method that can clearly plot the hierarchy and progression of disease manifestation, while identifying and correcting the underlying cause of disease manifestation rather than simply trying to mop up the ever-increasing list of complicated symptoms. After all, disease, or dis-ease, meaning inflammation, will always find our weakest link, or predisposition. We believe that to effectively address the underlying causes of disease manifestation, one would firstly need to open up our minds to the idea that potentially our key source of energy is in fact light. Theoretically making light our most important nutrient. The connection between light and our health is further supported by a growing number from the scientific fraternity. For example, Jacob Israel Liberman, OD, PhD, Professor Fritz Albert Popp, Alexander Wunsch. Our reducing ability to hold and convert light into energy, or ATP. We believe that our ability to create energy, or ATP, is further undermined as we age or internally toxify. Triggering cellular changes, as identified by Henrik Kremer's 16 stages of cellular change, where he identified the changes between a healthy aerobic cell, 80% oxygen, 20% glucose, to the almost anaerobic cell, 80% glucose and 20% oxygen. There is also evidence as demonstrated by Budhini Samara Singh that an almost anaerobic cell is only 1 16th as effective at producing ATP, which is a huge reduction in the energy needed to ward off dis-ease. We believe these changes at a cellular or mitochondrial level may well affect our ability to hold and convert light effectively into energy, ATP, therefore potentially impairing our ability to be truly enlightened.
the optimum ability to hold and convert light may be the true meaning of the term enlightenment, which could possibly have been the rationale behind many religious beliefs that one should fast for at least one day per week, allowing the body the time to cleanse. We believe that the potential to hold and convert light into energy is within us all and is best demonstrated by the activities of the yogis in India, who don't eat for weeks at a time, yet function effectively. We use this example not to suggest that we should all live like a yogi, more to identify that this ability does exist outside the Western world, yet established nutritional wisdom seems reluctant to explain how this phenomenon is possible. It's worth noting that Professor Arnold Errett, the author of the Mucusless Diet Healing System, demonstrated without a doubt that when he fasted his strength actually increased, not decreased, indicating that on occasions less sometimes can be more when it comes to supporting health and our mental agility. We believe that when employing an understanding of electromagnetic nutrition, we need to be able to assess both the biochemical and electromagnetic needs of the body. Therefore, we believe that an electromagnetic nutritional consultation would normally need us to identify the status of the following values. When setting up any scientific experiment, one would normally want to evaluate the levels of hydration, pH, temperature, light availability and oxygen of the environment one was wanting to conduct the experiment within, which in turn would determine the outcome of the experiment. This is no different within the human body and must be a key reason why the poll of 1,500 scientists reported that 52% of them had failed to reproduce at least one other scientist's experiment. In naturopathic terms, we believe that identifying these crucial levels is best done through mapping the chronology of these influences over several generations, offering us a roadmap of how the dis-ease picture has manifested over generations. We don't believe we are alone with this theory as this could be a factor that leads many insurance companies to show great interest in the illnesses our ancestors suffered from when offering us life insurance cover. In simple terms, an electromagnetic nutritional assessment would vary from a purely biochemical assessment due to an ability to evaluate the levels of hydration, pH, temperature, light availability, oxygen, toxicity, and the electromagnetic conductivity within the client's internal environment thus empowering the practitioner to create a personalised approach designed to optimise the client's cell membrane potential. The key objective must be to create a strong cell membrane potential. The cell membrane is made up of three layers. The inner and outer ones hold a charge. The centre is made up of fats creating channels, which work a little like computer gates. In a healthy cell, the nucleus must hold a very positive charge. The inner cell membrane a negative charge and the outer cell membrane holds a positive charge. A strong differential between the inner and outer membranes is critical for vibrance and health. At this point, we believe the practitioner should be evaluating the appropriate electrolyte rebalance and conductivity of the cell. The ability to eliminate waste matter effectively, reduction of stress that in turn impacts our cellular hydration, for example, EMF pollution, being out of rhythm with natural cycles like eating and sleep patterns. Addressing these factors maximizes the creation of a large electron cloud around the cells, which then traps a large quantity of photons of light, which naturally attracts oxygen to the cell, influencing biophoton activity. One of the crucial pathways for biophoton production is ample carotenoids in the diet to facilitate melatonin production, which in turn influences porphyrin activity at cell membrane level to facilitate biophoton production, leading to our ability to access a fuller human potential. Addressing these points, we believe will support a positive change within the 16 stages of cellular change, as identified by Henrik Kremer leading to the true meaning of greater enlightenment and oxygen availability, or as some might say, a state of true enlightenment. Empowering your client. The idea of handing back the understanding of how their story has built up enables the client to reconnect with their inner belief, or as some might suggest, the biology of belief, that enables the reactivation of our inner belief systems, which in turn reduces fear of the unknown or unexplained reducing cellular stress and dehydration, 
taking the body off dehydration alert, and is the final part of the jigsaw to creating the optimum cell membrane potential. Want to know more? Why not join us or download a series of webinars by Barbara Wren? Or consider attending one of our one-day workshops in London or the South West. When it comes to understanding the connection between light and our health, here's what the experts have to say. Biophotons are at the basis of all biochemistry. If the biophotons are disturbed, the resulting biochemical reaction is disturbed. And this will lead to physical symptoms. Johann Boswinkel Life is driven by nothing else than electrons. Albert von Susent Georgi, Nobel Prize winner. We are still in the threshold of fully understanding the complex relationship between light and life. But we can now say emphatically that the function of our entire metabolism is dependent on light. Professor Fritz Albert Popp. Interesting reading. Luminous Life by Jacob Israel Liberman. OD, PhD. Cellular Awakening by Barbara Wren. Our Return to the Light by Barbara Wren. Mucusless Diet Healing System, Professor Arnold Errett. Varied Reading by Professor Fritz Albert Popp.